Great new footage, drone footage published by the Department of Water Resources today. Friday, the 10th of March, 2017. Shooting down the tail race. There's more of that rebar, busted up concrete. And look at that flow from the Hyatt power plant. Just like synchronized swimmers, these large excavators still going to work, digging out the Thermalito diversion pool and making that debris field smaller and smaller. Don't drop that thing in the water, boys. We'll take a look at the real time numbers and take a look and see how the design underneath the Oroville Dam is built. The Hyatt Power Plant and the River Valve Outlet System. Working this pile further and further back towards the tail race of the main spillway. Here's a quick look at the real time numbers on Friday, the 10th of March, 10.30 a.m. We got the reservoir hovering right around 860 feet. Remember the new arbitrary cutoff, knock it off number is gonna be 865 feet, leaving 35 feet of flood control space, five feet to go. Outflows, got all five turbines flowing at over 12,000 CFS. Inflows still variable, between 14 and 15 up to 16,000 CFS. So inflows are exceeding outflows. The reservoir continues to rise. Remember we got lag time in these numbers, so they do not respond instantaneously. That's a big reservoir, a lot of flood storage to, to work with there. As the reservoir rises, it should rise more slowly as there is increased volume as the reservoir gets more full. River releases are cranked all the way up to 11,000 CFS. That's gonna cause problems, I think, for the farmers downstairs, uh, downstream, whose uh, berms were already weakened and quite a bit of collapse when they reduced the river flows quickly down to 2,500 feet during this emergency repair. So quite a bit of collateral damage, I think, is still going on with the farmers downstream on the Feather River. Rain remains uh, the same, no rain, 39.48. Battery voltage for the unit. 13.4. The incident update report for today talks about the current flows and the lake level and approximately seven, 715,000 cubic yards of material have been removed from the deep debris pile to date. Remember that last estimate was 1.5 million cubic yards total. So now that we're getting back to a new normal form of operation for releasing water out of Oroville Dam, primarily relying on the Hyatt power plant and possibly the river valve outlet system. I think it's a good opportunity now to dive in and take a look underneath the Oroville Dam and see how all that system works. First, I want to show you all my source material for, for all this information. You can get uh, quite a bit of uh, preliminary information right off of Wikipedia on the Oroville Dam and the 2009 River Valve accident. I've got a PDF presentation back from 2013 uh, from the Department of Water Resources, a 2015 Department of Water Resources briefing on the River, Oroville Dam River Valve Outlet System. A very good article here in News Deeply, Water Deeply, regarding key Orville Dam, drain, plug, does heavy storms pound the reservoir. This was actually a pretty decently well-written article. There's also the 2016 draft annual review and a fascinating new thing here from the archives, the California State Water Project, the original book on the Oroville Dam. Look at that, the original blueprints of the Oroville Dam. Deep down in here is the Hyatt Power Plant. And uh, let's go back to page one. Let's see what this looks like. There it is, the California State Water Project, November 1974, Ronald Reagan Governor. 
So if we go back to that video on the birth of Oroville Dam, we see this first diversion tunnel being built. So in order to build a dam, first you gotta divert the river, and that's the reason the, at the beginning of the project, two diversion tunnels were built to divert the Feather River out of its natural stream bed and through the tunnels so that the dam could begin to be built. That, these two diversion tunnels are a fundamental part of the Hyatt Power Plant and the River Valve Outlet System. In order to understand how all this works, I think we gotta go back and review the various elevations of each of the components here at the Oroville Complex. To say that the Oroville Dam is 770 feet tall, is the tallest dam in the United States, that, that doesn't help much until you understand what all the different elevations are. So maybe for ease of explanation, we'll just go back here to Google Maps. The reservoir elevation, <laughs> You love it when I whack that screen like that? <laughs> it's like crinkling your newspapers. The reservoir elevation is 900 feet. That means that the highest point of the elevation at which it will top that emergency spillway. That also means the emergency spillway located right there is at 900 feet elevation above sea level. The dam and spillway, the top of the spillway that is, the top of the dam is 922 feet so 22 feet above the emergency spillway is the top of the dam and there's where it notches down from 922 feet down to 900 feet the desired flood control or required flood control elevation is approximately 850 feet elevation. That's where they like to keep this reservoir and that number varies throughout the season in order to maintain adequate flood control. That's why we want to get this reservoir back down to 850 feet before we lift the emergency evacuation warning. Since inflows are exceeding outflows, we're gonna, they are going to have to fire up this main spillway again, I'm sure to get the reservoir back down to 850 feet this season. Okay, more elevations. What's up next? Um, the main spillway right here. This spillway can only draw water down to 813 feet. That's not a very deep spillway. And remember, as that water level gets close to 813 feet, they gotta slow that water uh, way down to avoid scouring this inlet to the spillway. With the damage done to the spillway, the pickle that they remain in today is to, if they're gonna run this spillway, to crank that spillway up to about 40,000 CFS to get the water to fly off the busted spot of the spillway into the plunge pool and avoid head cutting of the busted spillway. So 813 feet is the elevation of this spillway inlet. Now the next way to get water out of the reservoir, the main way now that we've got the Hyatt Power Plant back online, remember we had to get the Hyatt Power Plant which is located deep in the bowels of the dam over on this side, we had to get that power plant back on the grid in order for it to operate. You cannot run water through the turbines without them being hooked up to the grid and having a load on those turbines. You'll just spin them up and and, and uh, destroy the turbines. Right here is the inlet structure for the Hyatt power plant. It's a sloped series of uh, tunneled gates heading towards the deep or heading into the reservoir. But the bottom of this structure is at 640 feet. So the most you can lower this reservoir using the Hyatt power plant is 640 feet. Remember the exhaust down here, here's your two diversion tunnels, one and two, I forget which one is number one and which one is number two. This tunnel is slightly lower than this tunnel. This water elevation down here in the Thermolito diversion pool needs to remain below 224 feet to keep these tunnels open. That's the whole problem why we couldn't run the amongst other things, why we couldn't run the Hyatt power plant was the debris from the spillway 
here filled up this Thermolito diversion pool and blocked off the exhaust ports to the power plant, rendering the Hyatt power plant unusable. Besides that, they also had to pull the wires and disconnect the Hyatt power plant from the grid. So two strikes, but that is now fixed. Regarding connecting the Hyatt power plant up to the grid, remember too, this is a temporary uh, fix where they've restrung the wires along the original towers. They're going to restring a whole nother set of electric wires to the higher power plant this direction and avoid going over the emergency spillway with the high tension lines. Once the water level in the reservoir drops near or below 640 foot elevation, how do you get how do you continue to get water out of the reservoir? You have to continue to get water out of the reservoir to continue to feed the Feather River and keep that environmental system working correctly and at the right temperature. That's where the river valve outlet system comes into play and that gets the water out of the very bottom of the reservoir and into the Feather River using two six-foot tubes mounted in one of the diversion tunnels and we'll take a closer look at that here in these slides. And that will deliver water at a rate of about five up to about 5,000 CFS. Now there's a bit of history on these uh, river valves and there was a, a very frightening accident in 2009 but it was the emergency of the drought of years in 2014 that got these uh, these uh, river valve outlet system valves back into operation because they needed, they had to get the water out of Oroville Reservoir to keep the Feather River alive during the drought. Here's the original embankment plan blueprint for Oroville Dam, and it shows the Hyatt Power House, all six units, the two diversion tunnels, the penstock and manifold into the Hyatt Power House, and the inlet system, the gated inlet system for the Hyatt Power House also shows the original flow of the Feather River. Let's use this more simplified diagram from the 2015 DWR briefing to explain the inner workings underneath Oroville Dam. First note, the north arrow for orientation and also the axis of the dam Starting at the upper left portion of the drawing is the inlet structure to the Hyatt Powerhouse, which bottoms out at 640 feet elevation, feeding into two penstocks, numbers one and two, and then manifolds into the six turbines in the Hyatt Power Plant. And then the water departs the turbines into the diversion tunnels, one and two, and exhausts out to the right into the Thermolito diversion pool. Since I don't have any fancy animation, I gotta go back to my camera and pen here. Notice how every other one of these turbines is a generator pump turbine. In other words, see these arrows? Number two, number four, and number six, arrows going both ways. Those turbines can both create electricity, generate electricity, and pump water, pump water back into Oroville Reservoir. This is how reservoirs are used like batteries where you're able to, during periods of peak electric demand, run all the electric turbines, turbines creating electricity, and then during times of a low electrical demand, late at night, you can turn those uh, turbines into pumps and suck the water back out of the diversion pool, back up into Oroville Reservoir, replenish your battery, so to speak, and get ready for the next uh, high peak demand period. Remember, one of these turbines, and I'm not sure which one, I think it might be number six, is out of service still at this time. When they completed the construction of Oroville Reservoir, they plugged these two diversion tunnels and that began the flooding of the reservoir, the creating of the reservoir. This plug in diversion tunnel number one is still in place. When they, went, when they plugged up diversion tunnel number two, they added two six-foot pipes and a couple of river diversion valves at the end of those pipes and created the river valve outlet system in order to be able to get water out of the very bottom of Oroville Reservoir into the Feather River, even without the Hyatt Power Plant working.
And according to this slide, if that water level is up to 640 feet, which is the bottom of this, of this inlet structure of the Hyatt power plant, you can achieve 4,000 CFS capacity through the river valves. Additional miscellaneous tunnels include the access tunnel to the Hyatt power plant. Of course, this whole area is high and dry in there, and that's why they absolutely needed to prevent that from flooding during this latest disaster. Uh, another small tunnel to get the um, power out of the Hyatt power plant, the wires. Uh, and then a control equipment chamber from the Hyatt power plant into the river valve outlet system, which also and that allows air to come in here and equalize this system into the river valve system and into the second diversion tunnel. Another very important detail to this river valve system and diversion tunnel is this dissipator, energy dissipator ring located right here. We'll look at that closer at that next. Come on.